so we have your impressions as we as we showed mm -hmm. before. From there, we took the scans, they uh, modeled the shells, and then we made the shells. So this is the end result. This is the shell that came out of those vipers. So yeah. You can sure if you get a good picture of it. So red is right, mm -hmm. and blue would be left. So you can see it's not a whole lot of space. So when we took your impression, mm -hmm. um, this is what your impression would look like. And uh, we would take this impression and we would put it in one of these units. These units are called eye scans. And what they'll do is they'll take your the, the actual impression and create a digitized exact replica of that. And then we'll take this digitized replica of your impression and we'll use that to model. So what file are you working on now, Rajma? What is this? It's a half shell. Okay, so this is the rough image. Wait for it to load again. This is the rough image of what the eye scan actually scans. So you have the physical impression has become digitized, and now what Raja will do is she'll she'll finesse this ear geometry so that it um, it can hold the components that you requested with your hearing aid, whether it's a, you want push button VC or what matrix you may need for for your loss and she'll finesse the hearing aid so that it's, it sits the proper way in your ear and holds the components in, in the best possible way to suit your ear geometry. No ears are the same person to person or left to right, so every one is a new experience for her to model. Is this, is this an in-house application? Or is this something that this uh, we actually use three shape? It's pretty common in the industry. Gotcha. Um, all of our folks have been trained. It, it's a dual uh, mouse it, operation. We've been doing this for about two years in this fashion. So what she do? She's trying. She's deciding the cut line, so how far the hearing aid will stick out of the ear, and where the faceplate will rest. So what she's designing right now. So what is this, Rajo? Is this a uh, So I'm tricking, no, this is an IT. IT. So it's a full shell. Full shell. And I'm tricking, uh, trimming the all extra material around the face plate. Okay, so by her doing that, she knows what, what should fit comfortably in the air. She's taking any any sharp edges away, and so that it, it's comfortable when it rests in the patient's ear. And then maybe show some of the components that you're going to add to it. Be good. Yeah. The so that's feedback, feedback seal. seal. Yes. So she should plan the vent so mm -hmm. that the hearing aid can breathe. And then you pick another point for the receiver, right? Yep. So that's the part that would actually amplify the sound into the ear. And other components? Maybe you can point out some of the other components in there yeah. that he can see. Amplify it. So push button. Those would be your microphones. This is the battery door. That would be the chip, if you will, or amplifier. Yep. Receiver, right? Yep. And Receiver is back there. Is yeah. And so she'll plan the way everything should sit in the hearing aid, as well as how it should be modeled within our Vipers, within our 3D printers. This is virtual world. So the reality is what I'll show you in manufacturing. So they're going to take this virtual image and this virtual depiction of how everything should go together, and they're actually going to physically do it out there. Okay. So virtual doesn't always match physical. So it's a real challenge for our people out there to, to make what Rajal here has planned actually work. And then, and then this monitor over here is basically outputting what she's doing on this side? Is or this is a complete one that planner manufacturing does the review. Okay. So we see, this is a VC, PU, control. and this is the faceplate. 
in the back side with the bent. Yeah, this one I can see. So now you can see without the shell, you can see the components. Components. This is a single microphone, one microphone. Amplifier. This is the shells. So what's happening here, you'll see a laser come in, it's bringing new material over now onto the plate, and there's several um, hearing aids on there right now, shells. You'll see a laser will come down and it almost looks an erratic pattern, you know, sketch out those, it's sketching the shells right now. What's actually doing is burning. Mm -hmm. It centers a level, a layer of uh, material on top. It takes any, depending on the amount on the plate, could take anywhere from an hour to eight hours if I were to have a full plate with deep shells. Cycle time is really based upon your uh, depth. So it looks erratic, but it's really a play in the pattern. And this, we make many different colors, everything mm -hmm. from clear to brown to beige. Uh, we even make reds and blues. How many is in the batch? It, it varies. The max in, this, in this case here, I can't. Uh, it's probably about 15 in this batch, but I can make anywhere up to about 35 to 40 different shells. Compare what I said. Pairs or individual? Individual. So okay. how are you actually locking the components in here? So what they'll do is, you know, we're the neat thing about um, custom hearing aids that I like to tell people is you have this unique marriage of super high tech. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm using glues. And I'm cutting with a with a with a razor blade, and uh, I'm grinding the shells to make them uh, finish properly. But what they'll do is, all these components is what we call faceplate. And on the faceplate, you have that's where the microphones are. That's a push button. This is a battery door. Mm. The back side, that's your chip, and then that's the back side of the microphones. This is the receiver, the actual part that amplifies the sound. And what our technicians, Lord, can we look at your hands at least? Maybe yeah. you could, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was just kidding. Just oh, you, well, you were kidding the whole time? Yeah. We thought oh, you were no. serious. Oh, we were no. respecting your privacy. No, that's I fine. I thought you were that's serious. Fine. Can you well, show, you like, how, how we would, because um, you're much better than I am, how you would try to make the components fit in here? How, how we'd actually do that? That would be good a visual for him to see. Okay. I'm nervous, okay? Because I like to see people behind me. <laughs> okay. The Lourdes has been here about, what, 15 years? No, oh, yeah. 27. 27 years, so it takes a long time. Yeah, we like to hold on to our people, especially when they're as good as Lourdes. And the hole. If you had more time, I'd love to let you try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, as quickly as she did it, it's not that easy. I would have given up. Like this? Yeah. So she, there's a certain orientation has to be in, and then what she'll do is she'll glue it, and then we'll cut away the excess material with a, uh, with a sonic knife, and then they'll actually finish the shell off. Now, will she complete A to Z? Manufacturing here, or are there multiple stations that? So in our manufacturing to? setups, we have um, there's six people here. You have a wire planner, which is Lourdes, and these folks here they're actually closers. So Lourdes will prepare the work, and she'll pass it to one of the two closers, and they'll actually finish the eight off. They'll all check it. So Lourdes here is looking at here's how virtually it's supposed to that eight is supposed to look, mm -hmm. and she's positioning it. So the virtual has to become reality. Um, what they'll do is they'll check it to make sure it functions proper, properly acoustically. All the features are there. Without putting it in, how do you actually check it for correct acoustic? Acoustically, we uh, we do testing. In the, they'll do a preliminary test here to make sure that it functions properly, has the proper gain. But then we do a full ANSI test. It's gotcha. a qualified acoustic test that we do in our QA stations over here. Okay. So those, that's the final look. We'll do a full acoustic test as well as um, a visual and functional check. A content check, make sure that we gave the patient exactly what they were asking for. Right. But everything's done in the microscope. And, and this uh, is this is where 
you're connecting everything in yes. or soldering as well? Yes, or? yes. I'm installing the uh, sutures, sutures as well. That's an option, you know. So what you're doing here is pretty much the first critical process in manufacturing. Yep, she's prepping the work for people to close. So she gets everything set up. There is some wiring that needs to be done. Hence the 27 year experience. Exactly. And there's a wiring diagram that she knows what she has here, but if she needs to, she can go to, there's uh, spec sheets and wiring di diagrams for each circuit, so she can refer back to that and know exactly where to put, place the wires.